This is another in the first read series where I read a poem by a poet I don't know or know very little about and just do a first reading for the sheer joy of it to see how much I enjoy it. This is from Change 7. Um, I'm just going to go to the poetry section here. Some of you have asked um, how I find poems to look at. So I, this one I came to upon newpages.com. I like that the new pages. Uh, list of magazines and things that kind of keep it current so I like going there so I'm gonna just I just click these randomly I just uh, like the name of Amy Leanne Richardson so I'm gonna click on it let's see what it is when it rains I return so I like to look at the form before I look at a poem I always kind of look at the form to see what I'm looking at see if I'm looking at something traditional or experimental field poetics whatever it is so when I look at this one I I look, I noticed the short lines are right off the bat, and they remind me of Creeley, Robert Creeley's work. I don't, I don't know if that has anything to do with this, but they're very short lines. Um, thunder echoes for its hollow rhythms five. Uh, it looks like we're not dealing with traditional form. We're playing around with open form, or what people call free verse. There's this kind of like three lines, three lines, one, three lines, three lines, three lines, one, three lines, three lines, and then two. So there's, there's not a set pattern, although it definitely the three line stanza seems to be the overall thing. Short poems often um, seem a little bit hesitant. They allow for kind of a hesitancy of thought. Um, I think when you look at and start playing around with line length, you can kind of see what tent tendencies there are with lines. It doesn't mean they always do that, but they yeah, they do a good job of showing like a quick thought, hesitant, um, quick emotion, emotional burst, whatever it is. When it storms, I return. And like I said, Amy Leanne Richardson, I don't know anything about her. Thunder echoes, it's hollow rhythms etching into ebony skies. So thunder echoes its hollow rhythms etching into ebony skies. So thunder, it looks like ebony skies, so it's a dark night, thunder is echoing. I like the, the repetition of the, the sounds here, especially the vowel sounds. And I don't see this happening that much with E's, echoes, etching, ebony. It has a nice, like, just has a nice sound to it. I think I appreciate a poet has a good sense of this you know like just the sound of how a line works i mean sometimes i'm more interested in that than i am in meaning thunder echoes it's hollow rhythms etching into ebony skies vibrations of lightning coating the world in split seconds increment of light so this seems to go the ebony skies i seem to have read it correctly in the first part as night i think you could play around with that but the lightning here coats the world in these increments of light, so the lightning stands out in the dark sky and shines briefly for a second. Our eyes can only soak in so much, just glimpses of the rising. And this this line, our eyes can only soak in so much, is a very loaded line. I think you could read it in terms of the lightning, you can only soak in so much in terms of how you can take in the brightness and the, and the darkness, but also just like our eyes in themselves can only take in so much. Just glimpses of the rising creek, it's surging current to drown out the thunder. So this, you know, it feel, feel, feels like we're in the middle of a storm here, a storm image, because we have this rising creek, thunder, lightning going on, and the rising creek sound is surging, like it's drowning out the thunder, which is a pretty significant, um, flow to the creek here sour air meeting our tongues as we take deep breaths to calm racing hearts so the air is sour i'm not sure quite why the air is sour here in the middle of this storm but they're taking these deep breaths to calm themselves in the middle of a storm whoever they are we don't know, really know it just has our so we can assume it's more than one person uh, as in the near in the narration here so uh, they're trying to calm racing hearts. The hearts themselves are racing. But panic courses through us as fast as the creek climbs out. So they're full of panic. Whoever is here watching this storm scene or in it is full of panic. Um, it could be because of the rising creek, the sense of impending flooding, or just being in the storm. We don't know. The short lines do play on that hesitancy that fear that panic that comes up like i was thinking like short lines tend to do that that's definitely happening here 
But panic courses through us as fast, and the courses plays around with that lightning image from the beginning, like lightning you know, shooting through the sky quickly, um, as this creek is doing something similar, and that pan it's coursing through everything. Climbs out of its banks, lapping up against buildings, swallowing cars, teasing imaginations with its power, so the water itself overflows swallows cars, takes things away, this kind of sense of the flood is just over, overwhelmed and comes out. So we get this storm scene with a flooding creek and it overflows and it teaches and teases imagination because of how powerful water can be. And that itself is, is teasing. They don't ultimately know. I mean, this is a straight, a straightforward reading of this, I think, is really a storm scene. Somebody only can soak in so much they're kind of in the middle of it watching this scene but it says when i re rain i return i'm not sure when it storms i return oh they got the title different uh, that's odd here when it rains i return when it, when it storms i return when it storms i return it makes more sense to me when it storms i return um really kind of seems to play back any kind of storm is a replaying of this one flooding story that comes out so it could be i think red is a memory story so this is some kind of a memory that every time it storms that person kind of thinks back to it remembers that initial flood that that story the lightning the thunder it could all be there um, that initial story um, which would be common enough if you experience this kind of flood uh, secondarily i think you could read it as you know, a, meta, a metaphor for something else, like any kind of, like a storm itself. And I'm pushing it a little bit there because I, I don't really see it there. I think this is, is more reading into the poem than perhaps the poem calls for. Like a a storm itself is something that these people experience and it, it's overwhelming. So it could be metaphoric of something else beyond that. All right, let's see. There's a little bit about this this poet here. You, um, you can read this in itself. I like these kind of short, uh, the short line quality of this. Um, it's very short. It, very, it really moves. This person has a very good sense of, uh, of, of sound, too, that comes throughout the whole thing. So like the rising creek, it's current surging to drown out the thunder. Like, I think it's just a beautiful, beautifully put, simple language put together. So I'm, I'm curious to read more from this uh, this poet. Like I said, Amy Leanne Richardson. And this is on Change 7.